In this lecture, we'll learn how to force Webpack to load these styles by using the Style Loader module. At the moment, the elements remain unaffected despite defining styles in our project. This is because the code itself is being loaded through JavaScript, but we're not adding it in as a style sheet. Webpack will not take care of adding style tags to the document, nor will it separate it from the bundle file. We are the ones responsible for telling Webpack where to place the CSS code. There are two ways we can approach this issue. We can have Webpack dynamically add it to the page or bundle it as a separate file. Either solution works. It's all preference. We're going to look at both solutions. We'll need to add another loader. Inside the command line, run the following command. npm install style-loader-save dev. The style loader module does something pretty unique. It's able to extract CSS from our bundle. It'll load the CSS in a pair of style tags. The next step is to configure Webpack to use the loader. Inside the Webpack config file, we'll add another item to the list of loaders. We'll add the style-loader module. This module should be placed at the top since we want it to run last. We're finished. Run the command npm run start again. We shouldn't get any errors thus far. Let's refresh the page. The text for the header has changed to the color red. This change is happening because the style loader module we installed is loading the CSS dynamically. We can even check if this is true. If we were to view the Elements panel inside the Developer Tools, we'll find the styles in the Head section of the document. The styles were added dynamically. Inside this tag is the CSS we had in the SAS file. This is great. We are able to load CSS from our app dynamically. Let's review what's going on back in the editor. Inside the index file, we're loading a SAS file. Webpack will run the file name against the rules we have in our configuration file. If a match is found, Webpack will run our code through the loaders we added for the rule it matched. From there, it'll use the SAS loader to run the code through the Node SAS module. The Node SAS module will compile the SAS code into CSS code. Then, Webpack will use the CSS loader to add the CSS code into the bundle file. Lastly, the style loader module will make it so that the CSS code gets dynamically added into the document. This is a quick and easy solution, but most likely not ideal for production applications. In a real production application, you may want to save the CSS in a separate file that's entirely possible with the help of a plugin. We've gone over the first three core concepts of Webpack, which was entry, output, and loaders. The final core concept is plugins. Plugins are a way to extend how Webpack works. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to a Webpack plugin called Mini CSS Extract Plugin. It does exactly as its name describes. It'll extract the CSS from the bundle. The CSS will be saved in a separate file. It's very flexible, so I recommend you give it a good read before moving on. Let's install it. Back inside the command line, let's run the command npm install mini-css-extract-plugin-save-dev. The module we're installing is a Webpack plugin. Plugins typically require more configuration than loaders. It depends on the plugin. The documentation for a plugin will usually tell how to configure it. Let's begin adding it to our project. First, we have to load the module. At the top of the Webpack config file, create a variable called Mini CSS Extract Plugin. Its value will be the module we installed. In the Webpack configuration object, on the same level as the entry property, add a new property called Plugins. Its value will be an array. We can instruct Webpack to use the plugin by adding it to this array. 
Inside this array, we'll create a new instance of the module and pass in an object. The object is the configuration settings for the plugin. We want the CSS to be saved into a separate file. We're going to configure one setting. We want to tell the plugin the name of the file it should use. We can add a property called file name. Its value is a string holding the name of the file. We'll set this property to main.css. We don't need to configure this further. There are more settings we can add, but those are optional. We're almost done. Next, we need to replace the style loader inside the rules with the mini extract plugin. The name of the loader is stored inside the module we just loaded. Using the mini CSS extract plugin object, access the property called loader. We're adding the plugin's loader as the first item in the array. This means our CSS code will run through it last. Our CSS will run through the SAS loaders, followed by the CSS loader, and lastly the mini extract loader. The mini extract loader will save the CSS in a separate file. That should take care of everything. Inside the command line, run the command npm run start. Upon running this command, Webpack will tell us that two files were created. The bundle.js file and the main.css file. That's exactly what we wanted. If we were to take a peek inside the dist directory, we'd find the main.css file. Inside of it will be the CSS. This is fantastic. We've successfully extracted the CSS from the bundle file. Let's switch to the document and link the style sheet inside the head tag. We've successfully integrated SAS into our project. We can begin using it to help us style our documents. Let's learn some of the basics of SAS and understand the benefits of it. We went through quite a bit to set it up, so we might as well see why you'd want to use SAS instead of CSS.